friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm Brandilyn Daly, and this is not the kind of content I usually bring you. This video is definitely a little bit different than my regular videos. I'm not showing you anything sewing related, but it is projector related. Today I'm bringing you the non-woodworker's guide to making your very own UST stand. And that's me, I'm the non-woodworker. I sew, I know how to use a few tools, but um, woodworking is not my thing. It is, however, my husband's thing. This is Robert from Daily Woodworks, and he is going to be my guide as I go through and make this stand and bring you along with me, because I truly believe that if you can follow a sewing pattern, you can make this. We're gonna use the plans he created. They're linked in the description box. They're $5, and you can find them on his website, therecreationalwoodworker.com. We started our adventure by visiting our local big box store, where we had to make the requisite stop outside to see the lawnmowers. Did you just film that? Mm -hmm. Is it nice? And right away we experienced a bit of chaos as we figured out yeah, what we yeah, wanted to do. Action. Okay, so one of the things you're going to need is a drill. There's several options here. Um, Robert, I'm thinking this one right here would do. Yeah, the cheapest one there is work fine. So you just get a cheap drill. This one is $60. Um, there's also an impact driver that's $60. All these things right here would work. For woodworking. Action. The other thing you're gonna need is a jigsaw. This is one right here. This one is $99. No, it's not. That's not that. It's right there. This is not a brushless. Oh, you're correct. Well, I'm not sure how much this is. But Somewhere this... there's a jigsaw that costs <laughs> money a certain amount. But actually. Here, actually, yeah. So the other thing you're gonna need is a jigsaw. This one is $89 and you uh, will just use the same battery for it that you use with your drill if you buy the same brand uh, to make a few of your cuts. This chaotic beginning turned out to be a bit indicative of the entire process. Oh, I'm on the camera. Oh, I thought you were saying what? I like this one and then... And, well, frankly, our lives. But we did manage to find all the things that we would need to make this project. We didn't buy any of these tools. We actually didn't buy any of this because we had supplies at home. Robert has his tools and all of the supplies Robert had previously bought through Amazon and if you use the affiliate links in the plans, you will have the exact same hardware that we used. And so all of the dimensions and everything should be exactly the same. Those are affiliate links that don't cost you any extra, but they give our family just a little bit of money to help support us, and we appreciate that. The plans do assume that you have a few basic woodworking tools already, so you can find those listed below in the description box. The only major tools you're going to need are a drill and a jigsaw, which we've already shown, and we'll show the parts that you'll need to go with that in the next few clips. So then you need some saw blades for your jigsaw. Um, this one is $6 for two. They're wood blades. They say clean cuts on them and they go in a jigsaw. You just want to make sure that you get what goes with the saw you're buying. Conveniently way at the very top of this for $20. There is a kit that has drill bits and um, Oh, the ones that go for the screws. What are they Driver called? Bits. Driver bits. So that you can use this in your drill to make the holes that you need and to um, screw in the screws. So this is optional, but it's a give you a little countersink to make your holes a little bit prettier. You're gonna need a square. Here's one I just saw walking down the aisle. This one's five bucks. It's bright orange, so you don't lose it. There's actually quite a few things you could use this for sewing too, if you wanted to. And here we've reached the portion of the video where I'm going to stick all of the things that distracted me for their uses for sewing as we were searching for the things we needed for woodworking. Here's some more squares that would work. Also, these make really nice straight edges, these drywall squares. I love these things for these small parts trays uh, because they're magnetic and you put your pins in there and they stay where you put them. I like it a lot better than anything else I've tried. And I noticed sheet metal for making your cutting board magnetic. Okay, back to woodworking. Um, but just any sort of speed square so that it has right angles for you will be what you need. So you'll need wood glue. I like type bond two. You could probably I, get away with the smaller bottle if yeah, you're not you going to do. Yeah, you can get away with the small bottle if that's what you need. Um, I don't know why I like this particular one. This is the one I've always used and I have no reason to change it and use something different. 
but there are a few different options. And again, um, you won't need the huge bottles at all. One of the small bottles will be just fine for this one project. We are looking at the plywood. We need two foot by four foot by three quarter inch. Right there it says, I can see that's the right thing on the label, but. Yeah. So when you buy this, look at the corners and the edges. See, this is kind of damaged. You don't want that. This one's splitting apart. You obviously don't want that. And you kind of have to dig, if you're gonna buy it like this, you kind of have to dig through to find a good piece of plywood to work with. So what you wanna look for is you wanna look for good straight edges. If you've already got your square, you can check and see if it's square because we're gonna use the edges of this to reference off of to make our joints wet. So just be aware of that when you look it over and try to find the cleanest sheet you can that's three quarters of an inch. Uh, these were actually mislabeled. And so, so if you have your square, you can use yeah, that to so measure that get too. Get your square, pick up a tape measure. That's another tool that we need to show them is they need a tape measure um, and just double check it when you buy it. Another thing you're gonna need is a tape measure. We obviously do not need the giant ones like that down here basically any of these are gonna work even the small little 25 foot ones uh, there's even a 16 and 12 foot ones we don't need a super long one just make sure that whichever one you choose you work with that through the whole project so that you'll be accurate in this Lowe's it's over in these drawers with the specialty stuff specialty fasteners uh, we are looking for furniture feet to be the leveling feet for the projector if you can't find the right thing and you can't order it off of Amazon, you can buy these elevator bolts. They will work. You'll just want to put some of that like sticky felt stuff you put on the bottom of chairs on the bottom of it to help protect your surface. And then you'll need a nut that fits it. Yep. And see it says it right here, 3 eighths by 16. No, because your hand's in the way. So that tells you 3 eighths by 16 will be the size nuts that you need. 3 8 by 16 T-nut was over here in furniture parts, and that would be what you needed for the other half of that bolt. But still in this little section, there is knobs. Quarter by 20 knobs right there. And they'll just thread, these just thread onto a bolt. The hex bolts are in this section, conveniently labeled hex bolts. And we're just looking for the correct sizing. I'm not seeing three inch hex bolts here air on the side of longer than you need so since i don't see three eighths three inch i'm just gonna go with you know three, three, three and a half three inch. and a half yeah okay right here so then there'll be a section with washers right. as well oh, that's nuts down here there's quarter inch washers over here in the metric section we're looking for the m4 by 40 now this is specifically for her projector. Which so, this is for the Epson yeah. Ultra Short Throws. Your different brand might have a different size, but all of the Epsons that I've used so far have had that same size uh, screw needed yep. to attach them. And you can just Google your model of projector and it'll tell you what size screws to put in it in the owner's manual or whatever. And then you need wood screws, six by inch and a quarter, will work just fine. Make sure that they are wood screws, not something like drywall screws, and you'll be good. We're back in the car. We didn't actually buy anything um, because we have all these supplies at home, and so I didn't want to spend the money that we didn't need to spend, but everything we just showed you will work. There's also an Amazon list with links for all of these things that you can get um, more easily that way and not have to search for the right screws at the store. Yeah, just use the links in the plans, order it from Amazon. You will have to go to the store to get the plywood, but that will save you 45 minutes of digging through all those parts bins, trying to find the thing you need and not having to go to two box stores. I will go ahead and build this list on the website when I get home and give you just sort of an estimated total. About $75 in materials, depending on where your area is at. Tools are completely dependent on what you choose to buy. We looked at what they had at the store. Again, on Amazon, there's some cheaper options that have cords, um, just a jigsaw and a drill and a woodworking square. That'll get you, that'll get you there. Yeah. So you can expect to spend probably less than $100 unless 
your area is very expensive or you live somewhere with a different exchange rate. But that's pretty good. And I've had a couple of people comment already that said they spent about $50. Um, they obviously already had tools. They were just buying supplies. Okay friends, we are back from the store and we have all the things laid out that we bought at the store. Some of them look a little different because we're using what Robert already had. Uh, we've got the two by four by three and a quarter sheet of plywood here, a jigsaw, a fancy bottle of glue, um, screws, bits, all those things. Here is the square and a drill and a tape measure. Um, and all of the little notions, what did you say they're called? Hardware. Hardware, we have about two. So we're going to get started with step one. You're also going to need the plans. Um, Robert finds it easier to have these printed out. Usually when I'm sewing, I'm in the room with my computer, um, but I have a desktop, not a laptop. So I've got them printed out here. If you've got a tablet or on your phone, you don't have to print them out. Um, you get a pretty picture on the front showing you what you're working towards. Then there is the table of contents here and links to the video and the materials which we already have in front of us. So the next page is the cut list and on the cut list it's going to show us exactly how to cut this board to be the pieces that we will need to assemble. It's kind of like quilt cutting I feel like. Um, but you know, not exactly the same. So we're gonna end up with three rectangles and two triangles, sort of triangles, it has a blunt edge to put together to build our mount. The cut list will tell you the exact sizes you're going for. I am going to mark them out on this board and that way I can use a straight edge and the jigsaw and follow that to cut the pieces out. Which I guess brings up another point. You'll also need something to write with. Unlike fabric, you can write with almost anything, um, but a pencil will sand off later, so that's what I'm going to use. I use a tape measure to mark out all the different measurements, and then I'm using this bead square to make sure that I'm perpendicular to the edge of the board, and this long piece of wood as a straight edge to connect all of my points and get all my pieces drawn out. I went ahead and marked out the little triangles. I just used the square to measure up and a straight edge to give me a straight edge. I'm going to do the green rectangle now and I measured using the measuring tape but I want to make sure that I'm going straight across this board. So I'm going to use, and the square is not long enough to reach. So I'm going to use this straight edge to guide me but I'm going to use the square to make sure that the straight edge is square before I start tracing. So I'm just going to um, use a little lip at the bottom and butt it up against the wood so that it is square and then I'm gonna scoot it until my straight stick is meeting up with the tick mark that I made at the top and then I can use this straight edge knowing that it's got a 90 degree angle and it is perpendicular to the edge of the board and now I've got a trace line and I'll show you again a little closer up over here so I'm using the square to make sure that I am square to the plywood and I am using this straight edge to follow the mark that I made and drawing a straight line and I'm I wrote pink in the two little triangles I'm gonna write green in here just to make sure that I'm keeping straight which pieces which I also wanted to show you that some tape measures have the fractions marked out for you, um, but if you're sewing, you are probably, and using imperial measurements, you're aware of how the fractions work on a tape measure. All right, I've got two more pieces to lay out, and then we'll move to the next step. It was a little bit more tricky to measure for this blue piece because you're not measuring from the edge of the board, so I did the very best I could to light it up right there. We're not doing super precision work, so it will be okay. Um, and then to, in order to line up my straight edge this time, I'm gonna use the edge of the board way over here, um, and it'll be way past where I need to draw, but it will still keep me square. I'm gonna label 
this one. I'm just writing lightly with the pencil because like I said earlier, it will sand out later. I did notice that this measurement right here is the same as this measurement right here. And I asked Robert and he said he just, um, because a grain line, it he didn't end up using it that way. But if you wanted to just make that one cut a little bit easier, you could. And if I totally just confused you right now, don't worry about it, copy the diagram exactly. We're gonna have a little bit of scrap no matter what and on the diagram it's off on the edge but I'm gonna have it between my blue and my orange piece that way I can order that way I can measure from the corner um, rather than from my marks before because I find it a lot easier to hook the tape over the edge and measure This just threw me off for a second, but there's two squares right here, that um, two orange squares that are identical in size. It's just only one of them is marked. Just use this square to mark that down. Um, and somewhere, something was not square because those lines are not square to each other. So now I'm just gonna go back and check all of these and make sure that I was square the other times. Okay, I was just off on the one. I'm okay. I'm gonna mark this edge now. This measurement is small enough that the square reaches just fine. This is a really giant square though. And just for accuracy sake, I'm going to measure along the bottom here too because I don't quite trust my eyeballs right there to bridge that little one inch gap. line up both sides. Oops. And fill in that little spot. Okay. So I'm going to mark this. And I've got this all laid out and I'm ready to do the cutting. We turned the plywood perpendicular to the to the worktop because a jigsaw blade sticks out several inches below your base and so I didn't want to cut the wood that I'm working on I just wanted to cut the plywood that I'm trying to cut out. So we used a couple clamps to hold it steady to the table and I went ahead and I marked the offset from the blade, which is marked by that little triangle on this one, to the edge of the guide here. And then used the straight edge before, clamped here so that I can run along that, kind of like a quilting ruler. This is my rotary cutter. This is my quilting ruler. And instead of having a self-healing mat, I am cutting into the air. Um, the only problem with that is when I get to the end, this is going to fall down. Um, so I want to, I'm going to work from this end um, until I get really close to the end and then I'm going to make sure that I'm supporting it. That way it doesn't just crack off. As Micro says, safety third, take care of yourself. I'm going to keep my hands free of the blade and all of that stuff, but you're all grown ups and you know what to do.
Okay, so you can see a little bit closer now how I had that clamped on there. It's definitely rough on the top here, but we'll take care of that with sanding in a little bit. Now I need to cut this along this line and that line. So I'll reset my guide board and cut that. These are very fancy clamps, but you can buy clamps at hardware, what's that place called? Harbor Freight or wherever, you don't need super fancy clamps for this, you just need it to hold for this project. Oh, I almost forgot the offset. Ooh. What happened to the pencil? There it is. So I would move that, this piece completely out of the way. Okay, so Robert brought up a great point. I'm gonna to need to get this secured to the table that I've cut off now. So away goes that piece for a minute. Again, these are very fancy clamps, but anything that will clamp it to the tabletop will work. I think I might have caused myself a problem. Yep, I did. This board has to go on this side, not that one. So, womp womp, let's do that again. Why are you laughing at me? It turns out he wasn't laughing at me. He was laughing at the fact that I was using his professional grade equipment to make this do it yourself if you're not a woodworker kind of video. I was kind of using my body weight and my stomach to push this back towards this piece as I was getting towards the end. Not a lot, I don't wanna force it to snap the other way, but just trying to keep it stable at that very last bit of cutting. I'm going to be speeding through most of the rest of this cutting process because it's all basically the same thing I've just shown you. You set your board in a safe place, you clamp it down, you get your guide board set and clamped down, and then you run the jigsaw along the guide board to cut out the piece. My cuts are getting cleaner as I go along. We've got our two orange pieces cut. I'm gonna cut the blue and the green rectangles, and then I will do the pink triangles last. So this is a jigsaw. So theoretically, I could have stopped just a little bit past where I needed to make my cut that was perpendicular um, and had a little less waste. However, I very much want to make this as simple as possible, not as conservatively with materials as possible. So I cut all the way across and um, have this whole piece of scrap here. And then there's gonna be a whole different piece of scrap here um, because I am all about right now, simplicity and not saving my material. I have the green, the blue, and the orange pieces cut and set over to the side. As soon as I finished it, I set it on a whole other table so I didn't accidentally cut something that was already cut. And I'm left with the two pink triangles. And so I am going to cut them next. Now, I, when I drew it on my piece, I drew my diagonal line um, as one instead of with a gap the way it is in the cut list. Um, so I'm just gonna cut that line once. And then I've got the short end here to cut and this end. So I'm gonna save my diagonal line for last. I'm gonna cut this out as a rectangle like I've been doing all the other ones, and then I'll do the rectangle, or the diagonal down the middle. The only real issue here is this is much smaller pieces, so I might have to modify the way I was cutting, because there's not as much to, to lean on this table. Um, so I'm gonna, before I even clamp anything, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my offset and see if it's even possible to continue to do that. When my line didn't go quite to the edge for me to mark the offset, I just line up the straight edge with the line and give myself a little mark. That was Robert's suggestion, but it works. So I would have to mark, clamp my straight edge here and somehow still get my clamp on this tiny little piece that's left here. Yeah. So what is your idea? So you can take this and clamp it all at once. You know, and just make sure where you're going to cut is overhanging. Come on, Reynolds. 
rhino? They look like rhinos. Look, see, there's his horn, there's his eyes, there's his mouth. Oh, I'll never unsee that. Well, I have made my first mistake. As I was going, this scooted a lot and was no longer marking my guide. And I am, um, we call it about three eighths of an inch off at the end there. You're shrugging your shoulders as if that doesn't matter. It's easily fixed. What does that mean it's easily fixed? I don't have to recut it? No, you have to recut it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since I only have to get an inch and a half right, since this is going to have to be recut, um, I'm just going to clamp this to the table and eyeball that inch and a half. I feel like I can get that much straight. I did get that much straight. This piece is trash. This piece is going to be right and then I'll just have to recut this piece. However, I do want a straight edge for as long as this cut is. Well, I would like a straight edge for that, but I'm going to have to free... I'm not even sure how to freehand it and keep the overhang. If I stick it out enough for it to... Maybe that's why I had it different in the plans. If any of you are quilters, you know how in free motion quilting you keep the needle between your hands as you're moving around and you have to stop and reposition your hands? Do that with your feet while you're doing this. You can see I wasn't perfectly on the line, but it's gonna work. Now I cut out a second one of these all the way over from some plywood off the ground and we'll go on. From this scrap that I had earlier, we're gonna line up the right corners and trace the diagonal line to cut this way. But then this scrap is not quite long enough, so I am going to turn it whole thing over and mark the length on this piece I've already cut. It'll end up just being a little bit shorter. I'd say that's about an inch and a half, maybe two inches, and it'll be totally fine. Um, it won't look exactly like the plans, but it will still give it the structure it needs and it'll be completely workable. So, let's cut this now. Actually, I'm gonna write on here. Obviously, it's the only triangle, so it's pretty clear what it is, but if I've marked it, I know it's important and not the trash. The nice thing is, now this is nice and big and it'll be easy to cut. All right, I'm gonna be brave. Since I had to do the other diagonal freehand, I'm just gonna do this one freehand even though I have room to do a straight edge. It's like rogue rotary cutting for the first time. Well, I was very consistently about a sixteenth of an inch off the entire way down. At least it was consistent. And I'm going to cut the little tip off of this triangle and all of my cuts will be done. So I've got cut out green, blue, orange, orange, pink, and pink. The whole cut list is cut and I am ready to move on to the next step. This part is still a little bit of cutting because we're going to put the slot in this green piece. So the first thing we need to do is measure um, from long end to long end and find the center, which should be seven and five sixteenths, which yes, I've got a five and a half. So we go to seven and five sixteenths. Two, three, four, five, there it is. Hmm. That is not quite half, is it? Let me retry that. 
there is a typo in these plans. It should be 7 and 15 sixteenths. So the way we figured out that it was definitely wrong is I had it measured and I marked it and then we measured from the opposite end and it did not make the same number. But when you measure at 7 and 15 sixteenths and then you come back from the other direction and measure 7 and 15 sixteenths you get very, very close. Uh, and I honestly think seven and seven eighths would do you even better. Um, so do some checking, do some math, get that correct. Yeah, seven and seven eighths is working out for me very, very well. That could also be um, if you didn't cut things precisely, which I did not. So there you go. At that mark, I need to mark a line straight across the board and then I'm gonna drill some holes to give me some guidelines for drilling out this center slot. So I'm going to first mark this into a straight line <laughs> using the short end to line up my square. This is one of those things that if you get it off center, it's not going to function wrong. It's just not gonna look as nice. Now I need to choose which is my top and my bottom, and I'm just gonna mark this as my top and this as my bottom. Um, it really doesn't matter, it's a rectangle. Uh, but I need a mark to tell me where two inches from the top is. And then uh, I only really just need a mark there because I'm gonna drill that out and I'm gonna go four inches from the bottom. Okay. Um, so I have my line going vertically. I've got my top and my bottom marked. Um, and so next thing I'm going to do is drill a hole at this top mark and at this bottom mark with a quarter inch drill bit. I found some, I don't know, these are fancy and actually for this job, but basically something that will hold your work up. That way when you drill through, it won't go through your work surface. Um, anything that will securely let you put your board on it will work. I mean, honestly, a couple of thick books would be good. Uh, just make sure they're away from where you're drilling. All right, so at this mark that I made, I'm going to drill with this quarter inch drill bit. It has a really pointy end that I'm going to stick right where my lines cross and then I'm just gonna gently push down on the top and pull the trigger and let it do its work. And then reverse out. I didn't drill a hole in your work, bitch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down here at the bottom. making sure it's forward when you're drilling and reverse when you're pulling it out. Uh, and there's probably gonna be a little bit of tear out because we are not professionals, but it's gonna be fine. I need to draw a line connecting the widest points of my holes so that I can make, instead of just cutting a line that's just gonna be the width of the saw blade, I need to cut out an actual lot. So I need to connect these here so that I know how wide to cut. I don't know what I did with my pencil. It's in my hand. Oh. I just picked up this L square because that way I can um, keep it flush with the side here and then have a straight line. But you can use whatever straight edge you have. A quilting ruler would really work very well for this. Basically, this part right here that I'm colored here, that part is going to go away. All of that. Now we are going to use the holes that we drilled to put the 
my fingers are very far away from the trigger, the saw blade through so that we have space to cut because it's not like a sewing machine where you can just put the needle down where you want to. You have to have a place for it to go. So kind of following this guide that we made and using this hole to go down in, we're going to cut on that outside line and then we'll stop and we'll come back from the other direction. And it's a little bit tight. I just kind of stopped it so that the saw wasn't sticking out very far and sort of bumped it down in there. So here we go. I'm gonna angle towards where my line is and then follow my line and I might have to come back and clean it up or I'm definitely gonna have to come back and clean that up later, but it's the best way I can figure to do it right now. Like I said before, make sure you're moving your feet too because I had to stop myself and move my feet. And also, you might need to like blow on it to get the sawdust out of your way so you can see what you're doing. I'm having to really look and see what I'm doing now um, because my guideline is over here, or my, my guide on the foot is over here, but the saw blade is further back, obviously. And I don't want to go past that hole like I think I just did. Yep. But it's fine. It's going to be fine. I'm going to come back to the top and follow this other line. And then I'm going to come from the other direction and clean up this last little bit. Okay. You aim straight and get right in the hole, It you very easily tell when you hit it. When you're just a tiny bit off like I was there, um, you don't quite hit it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and come back from this other direction to kind of clean up this V area to get it back to where this hole is. And then I'm just gonna kind of cut straight across here and get that bit off. All right, and then I'm just gonna go across the top and the bottom to get this completely cut out. If you do a better job than I did and you hit the um, drill holes exactly, you won't have to do the top and the bottom, but I do. And there we have a very not straight and not pretty slot, but honestly, you're not gonna see this entirely all you know, like see the entirety of it whenever you're done and I'm feeling okay about it. It's gonna work. It's just not pretty. I do recommend that you don't take a break between cutting all your pieces and then cutting this slot because as I was going I was getting more comfortable with the jigsaw again and last time I feel like I had gotten really comfortable with it by the end. So if you're gonna have to take a break make sure you go through this step before you take a break um, because we're not gonna need the jigsaw again and it's good to go ahead and get all that done at once because this is a lot more precise than the rest of the cutting that we were doing. I'm very glad that I marked my boards with which color they are because I got to this one and it says base at the top, but it's the color blue, so I knew that this was the right one. Um, and there's three holes that we're going to drill and they have a very precise location which goes to the center of the hole which is where you're gonna put the pointy bit at the end of the drill bit when you go to drill the hole. Um, and I am going to be doing a 7 16th hole and that will match up with the furniture leveling feet nuts, I think is the right word that I'm going for here, um, to fit all of this. Now, if you ordered what is linked in the plans and down in the description box to Amazon, which is what we said to get, then this is the right size hole that you need to drill. If you got something different at a big box store, whatever else you may have gotten it, then you need to make sure that you are using the correct size drill bit for that foot so that it all fits together when we get to the end. I hope that made sense. I barely understand what I'm doing my own self. 
so it kind of makes it hard to explain it sometimes. But I need to come in an inch from uh, the side and the top. I'm just going to use this rigid ruler because um, it will be a little bit easier. And so I'm going to mark this inch. And then I'm going to come in the other way. And mark this inch. This ruler is an inch wide, which is very helpful. I just measured to make sure, but it is. Okay, so where those two lines cross is where the tip of that drill bit goes. I'm going to make the same mark over here. throw the pencil down first though. All right, now along the bottom, it's gonna be an inch up from the long side. That's certain. Um, and now we need to find the center. And it should be seven and 15 sixteenths, which is what it should have been in the last step um, corrected. However, it wasn't quite that for me. So I'm gonna measure, um, I'm gonna measure out on that one inch line that I drew to seven and whoop, 15 sixteenths. And then I'm gonna measure from the other direction. And this time I did get seven and 15 sixteenths. So I cut this piece a little bit better than the last one. Yay me. Um, and so that is my cross where I'm going to put the drill bit for this hole. So, Going to get these little donut things back. They're not donuts. They're called bench cookies. They're called cookies? Yeah, bench cookies. A it bench cookie? On this thing. Oh, a bench cookie. Totally gonna go with the cookie. That's a great idea. Alright, I'm gonna put these bench cookies on here. Well away, well away from where I will be drilling the hole. And here we go. Hold on, I'm going to give myself a little bit firmer base there so I can push down a little bit more. There we go. Nope. I'm gonna put something heavy on this side so I can press down a little bit more. Okay. There appears to be fire. You're running the drill backwards. Good gracious. Your intention is to keep this straight as you go down so that the hole is straight and not wobbly. That was a little wobbly. Whew. Okay. You got three holes. And there is a lot of blowout on the back of these. Um, but again, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna fix that with a little sanding later. Might not be pretty, but it'll be functional. We finished with the blue piece. Now we're onto the pink pieces. These are the side braces. Um, they are triangles to give strength to it, but the angle, this angle is not important. Well, actually this angle is important. This angle is not important. Um, and mine actually ended up a little bit shorter because of a miscut, but it's gonna be fine. Um, they're just gonna look a little bit different. They'll still function to keep everything squared up. So you need a right angle on this side and then the other angle can be whatever ends up working with your piece of wood. If you also have a miscut. We're done with the pink pieces, they're cut out. And now we go to the orange pieces. And you remember we cut out two squares that were the same size. And what we're gonna do first is glue them together um, and hope that we really did cut them as squares the exact same size, but I can tell you right now that I did not. So I'm gonna figure out which way they fit together the best because they're not perfect squares. And I think it doesn't matter, I've just cut them poorly. Um, we are going to do some cutting on this at the end so that it will fit to the ultra short throw that 
you have. Um, so it won't end up mattering terribly that they're not exactly the same size. We're just gonna go with it. So I am going to line them up the best that I can since they're not symmetrical and glue them together. Um, and then we're gonna use screws to hold, basically to hold together while the glue dries. So I'm set up to glue these together. I haven't done that yet. This is a very fancy glue bottle, but this is just wood glue. You can use the glue bottle that it comes in. Um, whoops. And we set up the drill with a, 1 8 inch drill bit um, so we're gonna pre-drill the hole and then screw the inch and a quarter screws in this drill bit is not on your materials list so if you don't have it it's fine you can just drill the um, screws in it's just this is gonna make it a little bit easier All right you can also choose now which side you want showing if that matters to you but this None of this is really gonna show. It's gonna be sandwiched between the ultra short throw and the back of the stand. Yeah, all right. We got the yes, this is enough glue. I'm purely guessing here. Square these up the best I can with my four cutting. Two of the sides are actually very nice. It's the other two that did not end up quite straight. I am just clamping these together with the glue between it. Um, and then I will use the screws. Obviously, most of you are not going to have this table with the holes in it, um, specifically for the clamping, but you can kind of hang it off the edge of your workspace or prop it up uh, on books or something and fit the clamps around it that way. Or just drill a hole into your grandma's dining table. Well, I just realized that, well, the drill, it's not gonna go all the way through. The screw's not gonna go all the way through the other side. No. Okay, yeah, okay. For the clamping. Oh, for the clamping, yes, no, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, so, Robert, the directions do not say, I'm assuming I'm just gonna go for like four corners. Mm -hmm. How close to the corner do I wanna be? All right, so roughly an inch in from each side, I'm going to put a hole. I'm not gonna measure this, I'm just gonna eyeball an inch. But since I have my clamps on the other two, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this and put screws in here, and then I will turn it off. If your drill has a screwdriver and hole drilling mode, apparently switching that makes your life easier. So you want to get your screws in there tight, but you don't want to keep going once they're in. Uh, otherwise you can strip the screw and then people get mad at you because their drill bits gets mess get messed up. Also, you can't get the screw out later if you need to. Swap these out. This is a very fancy drill too that just swaps out easy. I have a little more, but it'll work. Okay, so now just, oh. And it's a fancy drill bit too that leaves a little spot for the screw to go in. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks much nicer. Oh, apparently I went a little far with that one. That one's really far in there. It's fine. None of this is gonna be seen. Okay, so I'm gonna unclamp it and wipe off any glue that came out around the edges. This is all gonna get cut in a minute and none of this is gonna be seen very much. So I'm not trying to be super neat. I just don't want it to get on anything else as I am working. We've got a little bit more to do on this orange plate before we get to the assembly. We are going to mark, if we can find, there it is. We're gonna mark an inch and a half from the top. I'm just going to give myself a straight line across there. Okay. And then I'm going to give myself another line at four and a half. This ends up a little bit 
not straight. It's not the end of the world, but I am using the edge markings to kind of keep it uh, perpendicular to the edge here. Very much the way I would use a, a quilting ruler. I'm reverting to things I know here. Um, and then I need to measure out uh, five and one eighth, which should be center. So I'm gonna do the whole thing where I check that it's actually center because it's not going to be because these are not cut right. So five and one eighth is right here. And from the other direction, um, that's four and 15 16 so we're not we're, we've not got this correctly we knew that already so I'm gonna split that at five inches and that is like a 30 second off I'm gonna call that good enough I'm gonna drill it there I'm gonna do the same up here now because I think what happened is my lines got a little bit um, not straight there a little bit kind of keystones like we do when we do the um, calibration. I th it's not gonna be the same when I get up here. It's gonna be a different measurement. So we're gonna find the center up here. Actually, no, what I'm going to do is draw a straight line up from this other one because I do want those to be in line with each other um, even if they're not exactly center. So I've got my two points where these two lines cross which is where I'm gonna drill the uh, 7 16th hole. This is going to be for the hardware that we have listed in the plans. If you have something different, then you might need to do a different size. Um, I am going to drill a hole one quarter inch deep. Um, I feel like that leaves very little margin of error. And so the, the trick that I'm going to use, which I'm still feeling a little concerned about, is to give myself a little tape flag to tell me when to stop um, but I'm wondering how that's even gonna work because a quarter inch is not even like that's exactly a quarter inch deep isn't it yes this drill bit is exactly a quarter inch deep so basically when I get to the top of this guy I'm supposed to stop so I'm gonna do the tape I'm not sure it's necessary but I'm gonna take any help I can get why are you laughing at me and now for the rest of this recording, you will hear a very upset dog in the background that she is not with me and the eldest child, her two favorite people, and the eldest child randomly doing things in the background because he stayed with us while the other two went back with the zipper. Wraps tape around um, at the very edge of where this is a quarter inch um, to give myself a little flag that I can hopefully see a little bit better than the drill bit. And this drill bit is not a fancy quick connect one like the other ones. So let me show you how to use a chuck, right? Um, when you put the, the drill bit in generally. So you these three little triangly shaped things have to be loose for you to put the drill bit in. So you are just gonna spin this part with your um, hands and they'll come out and they'll be loose or if you spin the other direction, they go in and they get tight. I said that backwards. They go in and get loose, they come out and get tight. Um, so you just hold it in there and tighten it up. And this one's a little, you can, on all of them you can kind of feel and hear a click. This one is very securely a click. Some of them are kind of wishy-washy a little bit. Um, so. I'm gonna do, just like I did before, where the X is at the point where these two lines connect. I'm gonna put the pointy bit and I am going to drill down. This time I'm just gonna stop when the flag touches the outside of the wood and then reverse it back out. Um, so I'm gonna do both those holes. Using this center little poked out part, we're going to line up the quarter inch. We're just pretending. This is the eighth inch, we're just pretending. We're gonna line that up 
at that center and then we're going to drill through all the way through to the other side so i'm going to get set up to do that this quarter inch bit has the pointy bit here that i'm going to put in the part that was left by the pointy bit of the other one and i make sure i'm going forward and then i'm going to go through the rest of this as straight as i can from this side we've got the larger holes and from this side we've got the smaller holes it's perfect this is exactly what we were supposed to do and this will fit the quarter inch by 20 hex head bolts that are in the linked in the plans and linked in the description box earlier these guys were pink and I wrote pink on them in this picture they're purple it's fine pink and purple we can make, there. it's in a unique shape, so you're not gonna get confused. But we still got the green and the blue uh, here. And there's not any words. Um, this is very unlike a sewing pattern to me. There's just pictures, <laughs> but we can do this. So the green board is going to stand up on the blue board. And if you remember earlier, I marked top and bottom with a T and a B, so I'm still going to use that and I didn't mark it but we've got ooh, we've got the front with the two screw holes and the back with the one screw hole so this is going to go just like this um, centered or not really centered actually not centered at all uh, with this back here so I am gonna measure out the distances I need so I can set this precisely. And then we will glue this together and then we will use screws to hold it together while the glue dries. Right this minute I'm really wishing for a quilting ruler because I don't feel totally confident that my um, side is straight here. But I'm gonna measure four inches from both and will at least be parallel to this line whatever angle this line might be at. So I've measured four inches on both sides. I'm gonna use this L frame to connect those lines. So I've got four inches marked and that should leave me seven and one eight over here. This does not leave me seven and one eighths over here. This leaves me seven and three quarters. I'm not sure if that's my error. Probably it is. Oh, well, it is my error because there's gonna be three quarter inch board there. So right here at seven and one eighth is where the other part of it's gonna go. And then the space in between is where the board. It's things we don't think about with fabric. We don't think about the thickness of the fabric and how that's gonna change things. Uh, because it's fairly thin stuff. All right, so I'm not gonna draw myself the second guide there. I'm just gonna line it up with that four inch line. Um, and we don't need any guidelines going the other direction because we're just doing this piece right here. If I do this and I glue this now, there's no way for it to stand up at all. I, like, I don't even know how I would clamp this. So what do I do? <laughs> okay. Hold on a sec. I'm coming. <laughs> okay, so Brownlin brings up a really important point that this is going to be hard to clamp, especially if you don't have a lot of clamps. Now, I have a lot of clamps that I'm not going to use right now because I'm trying to do this with minimal tools. Because we're trying not to cheat. Right, so I'm going to hold this against my line right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and trace out this. So essentially we have a picture of where our board's going to go. Okay? Now I'm going to take my eighth inch drill bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and drill out my holes right here in the middle of my board. What this is going to do is it gives me an automatic pilot hole for whenever I go to assemble this so I can 
be a lot easier to screw together. And you'll know exactly where to screw it. Yep. And I'm just eyeballing an even-ish even space, so it doesn't have to be measured out or anything. And there's four here, roughly an inch from each short end, and then two more roughly centered between there. Okay. Now when we glue and screw it together, we're going to lay everything on its side, like this. Okay and then add our glue and then screw it together while it's sitting on the side and that okay. way it'll sort of hold itself together. Okay. The gravity isn't completely against us. So much editing. I was just cleaning up the glue that I got really far outside the line that I was going for. And now I'm going to on their side, put these two together. Now here's where we find out that Branolin did not cut these the exact same length even though they were supposed to be. It's gonna be fine. Does anybody else follow, um, I think her name is Andrea Arts on, on Instagram? That's very much her attitude. It's gonna be fine. Angela Walters is a quilting instructor that instructor that does the same thing. I appreciate that in an instructor. Using our pre-drilled holes here, we are going to screw this together. We're gonna switch it to the screwing in part first. Then we're gonna screw these together. Okay, so now I'm going to use the lines we drew because it pivoted itself as I was screwing it in. I'm lining things back up. I probably could keep going, but it's feeling awkward to me, so I'm gonna flip it over. And that will help me to, to get things lined back up over here. This is definitely not as straight as it was before, but yet again, it's gonna be fine. We have this part together know ish and now we're gonna add the back supports in that will keep the strength here now the problem here is that this should fit very nicely in here because it should all be right angles it's not because I was the one that did the cutting but as we screw wood is not the same as fabric and so as we screw it together it kind of cinches itself together and again, it's gonna be fine. I feel like though we need to do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and trace. I'm just gonna, instead of measuring anything now, I'm just gonna place this here um, at the edge right here, which is not the edge of the blue piece. It should be, but it's not. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace around it and do the same thing where I give myself the holes to drill through and glue it up. Same exact process. I hope you caught in the time lapse that I put glue in between here too. If you can see, it is all kinds of funky right now. This would not fly in quilting, but it's gonna be fine with this. I mean, you could make it work in quilting too, but it'd be a lot harder. So I just did the same thing. I drilled the hole. Now I'm going to use the hole to line these things up. Robert said you can't use a clamp really because of the angle of this. So I'm just using my little hands and trying to keep them far away from where the screw is going to go through. Okay. See, it already magically looks better. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do one, two, one. I'm gonna do one more hole, probably about here, um, and then we'll do the other side. So I'm just using a rag wet with a little bit of water to uh, clean up the glue that squeezed out. 
if you don't, it's not a huge deal. I just don't think it looks nice. Um, but you can sand it out later if you have to. It's just easier right now to wipe it off. the other side so doing the first one helped a little bit it's not quite as uh, misshapen but it's still not quite all squared up this one however though is lined up on the side so I am going to try really hard to get this lined up as well I don't have any real reasoning for this but I'm gonna put glue on the base here and then I'm gonna put it instead of marking it here I'm just gonna put it on this piece it's how I did the last one there's really no objective reasoning to that it's just gonna work fiddle with this until whoo until I've made a mess with the glue and I've gotten all the corners lined up I did not pre-drill holes because I wasn't thinking about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it here and then I'll get the base second. And then I'm going to turn it and do one on the base. The next page just shows you from a different angle. We're just gonna make sure we've got the top at the top, we've got the two at the front. The back has got one hole and the supports. We're good. Um, next, we're going to be putting the orange piece through to here, uh, but I haven't jigsawed this piece yet. So this piece is gonna fit here using this slot uh, once it's jigsawed out and ready for my projector. Uh, and then I'll also need to put the feet in. But the main assembly here is done. I'm, I'm mostly done. I just need to customize it to my projector and put the final pieces of hardware in. So I'm gonna clean up this glue one more time. ready now to go get my projector. Jigsaw this out to precisely fit it and do the very final bits of assembly. I am surrounded by a sea of projector mounts. And I am showing you all of these to partly show you um, why this projector mount is designed the way it is, and partly to show you the next bit that we're going to do. So let's start with this one. This is the first one um, that Robert made, and it has actually four feet on the bottom, two in front and two in back. And we thought originally, since when we use paper, that's how we adjust, that that would be the right choice. And it ended up just being too complicated and it wasn't working out right. So we moved on from the four feet design to the three feet design. If for some reason you really think that the four feet is gonna be what works best for you, you can do that. You'll just have to drill an extra hole and put an extra leveling foot on the bottom. However you end up deciding to do that. Um, but the three is what worked best for me after we got going. So, this was the first one, and as you can see, it has the 455 on it, which is a very differently shaped projector than the 595 right there. Um, and other brands of projectors are also shaped just a little bit differently. And so the next step that we need to do is to make the mounting plate for this 595 projector here. But I wanna show you how, depending on your projector, it's gonna be different. 
here you can see I've got it apart in the piece that we've already built and then the piece that we're fixing to build. With these 595s, the way this, the back of this projector looks, um, Robert just put the mounting block straight onto it. He had to, you know, have that double layer to have the thickness correct, but the back of the projector was designed in such a way that this flat square just fit. And if that's you, awesome. You're good to go. Use the correct size screws, screw your mount, mounting board onto your projector and you're done. You just have to add the hardware. If that's not you and you have one like, like my 595 here where the back has all these cutouts and you can't just fit a flat board on it, then we're going to get to that step next. I asked on Instagram for several of you to send me pictures of the back of your ultra short throw so that I could see what other brands looked like. And it seems like a lot of other brands have a very nice flat back. So again, check your projector. If you can get away with just putting that square on there, do that. If you just need to like slightly cut the square down a little bit smaller and put it on there, do that. That'll be so much easier. But if yours needs to be a fancy shape like this, do not despair. We're going to talk through doing that. This flat board just has the holes drilled in the correct position, which will be the next step. You can use the jump links in the description box if you need to just skip to that. Um, but as you can see, if there's just a flat back with these four screw holes on the projector. That's how we know that's gonna work. And plus you can just hold this up and see. Yeah, that's gonna work. If you can hold it up and see, yeah, that's not gonna work uh, because there's a significant amount of space there that we can't bridge with these screws. Then that's when you're going to have to make yourself a little template, cut it down, and make your make your orange squares of this instead. I don't know what shape this is, uh, so that it will fit to your projector. So a few of you are lucky and can skip to the next section where we drill the holes. The rest of you follow along to see how we make this, this. Robert has a really detailed video on his channel that I will have linked in the description box and hopefully up on a card right here. And you can go to that and see his super detailed steps for woodworkers to do that. I'm going to try to give you the same thing here in front of the expert to help us with this next step. And what we're basically going to do is take a tracing so that we know the shape that we need, transfer it to our orange block, our orange pieces that are put together. And we're going to use the jigsaw again and cut it out. Again, look at the back of your projector see what shape you need and you're gonna need to put it face down for this so you can see the back but pay attention to where your lens is and if you need to put something soft underneath it to make sure nothing um, injures that lens in any way do that this one's a little bit protected by the way the top goes over the top I didn't take that into consideration for any of the mounts that I've made for her for any of the projectors I've made for her and she hasn't complained yet the way these Epsons are designed there is a plastic sticky outy part right here that does protect where the lens is. I'm just saying some of the other projector brands have very different setups and they don't all have that protective piece. Okay, so what am I doing? You're basically gonna use your pencil and it's good to have like a shading kind of pencil. And so you need to kind of, okay, there's my screw holes right there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, you wanna tape this down. Actually. Hold on one second. Okay, while he is grabbing some tape, let's talk about the back of the projector a little bit. There are one, two, three, four, five holes that are kind of bumped out from the projector. And then there's another couple down here and another one right here. Um, and these three can be used for mounting to my understanding. You'll just need to make sure you have the correct size 
um, bolt to go in there. But these four are the ones we're going to use, any of these four. Um, you can choose, you need this one, this one, and then this top one and choose one of these two down here to use. Um, and if you have this same projector that I have, the correct size bolt is in the plans, but um, there are several different kinds that will fit depending on the projector. So you'll have to just make sure that it fits. And definitely, now's the time to test that. Um, so I'm gonna actually screw these into the four that I want, just to show a little bit better where those are. So I need to make sure that these four, that my wood is covering these four bolts because they, that's how I'm gonna attach it. Did you use the top one or the bottom one? Um, I used that one. Okay. Yeah, because then I was able to just kind of cut it a little more straight across. Right, so we don't have to do it down. Okay, that makes sense. So these four places is where I need to make sure that this wood block covered. Yeah, we need that paper. Make sure this wood block covers but then I need it to be cut in to fit around these bump outs. Hopefully that made sense to you. So we have the paper back. We have the tape. And you just kind of force it where you need it and then tape it down so it doesn't move. So now that there's paper covering it, I'm going to follow where my pencil can feel those bumps end to figure out the shape that I need. I can also feel... We're just shading. Okay, I'm shading over the circle to see where the hole is in the center. And also my paper just tore where the hole is in the center. And then there's another one right here. Okay, I'm gonna shade here. So I've got all four of the holes on here and I've got this shape that I need to follow mostly on here. I also sort of followed where this hole is for the cords to come out um, because on the ones that Robert has made, he doesn't know this because he doesn't use them. It's a little bit hard to put this cord cover back on because the wood sticks out just a little bit too far. So I wanna make sure I just trim that back just a little bit whenever I'm going so that I can get my cord cover on easily. So this is what it looks like. It looks ugly and messy and weird, but it's gonna be fine. So Robert said- Whoa, 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 whoa. These are my special shop scissors. They are not to be misused for anything other than shop activities. <laughs> are they for cutting paper? They're for cutting everything, but they're my special shop, shop scissors and we don't misuse them. So Robert suggested cutting out where my pencils are and getting the paper perfectly fit before I transfer it to the block of wood which seems like a prudent idea, so we're gonna do that. I'm very wise. Oh. Oh, are they sticky? They're, they're, they're bad. <laughs> there are knife sharpeners out there having aneurysms right now. It's just glue. He has a friend who makes, who forges knives. I'm gonna send him this video. Okay. <laughs> he knows what I'm about. <laughs> Are they that bad? They're really bad. Maybe you should um use your own paper scissors for this and not the ones in your husband's shop if you happen to be using his shop. Oh, 
Yeah, there's a lot of gunk on there. Test fitting. Making sure that all the holes are lined up. In fact, if I had an awl handy, I might just... I'm gonna use the Phillips head screwdriver and do that. There's holes in this table, so I'm using the Phillips head screwdriver and the hole underneath to just poke. Small holes in these. Um, so I can just ever so slightly turn this in there. They're fine, see? Did you just use acetone on them? No, WD-40. You want it to be like fully inside that curve. Yeah, so there's a little bit that needs to be trimmed off here. And there's a little bit right here I need to trim off. This I went a little too far, but I think it'll be end up fine. Yeah, so let me just make a couple adjustments here at the top. I don't need this weird little bit going up there, so I'm just going to round that around. Do they work to your satisfaction now? They are better now. This bit at the top, I'm just going to completely cut off my pencil instead of leaving a little bit of it like I did a second ago. Nope, I'm still not happy with this. It, it see how it's got a little dip I need to follow the dip instead of it going back up right there I'm also thinking about the fact that I actually have to cut this shape out so while it needs to fit where it needs to fit the more simple the shape is the easier it will be for me to cut Yeah, that's probably good. This is the shape that I came up with, and as you can see, it is, well, actually it goes like this. It is not exactly the same shape that Robert came up with. The shape that he came up with here works great. We'll see if this shape works. But the point is, it doesn't matter exactly what shape it is as long as it works. Okay, I'm gonna lay my template where it goes, and I'm going to think about the fact that the any belly button side <laughs> of these vertical screws goes next to the projector. And I am going to lay this paper on the projector. I'm gonna have to keep these guys, so it's gonna have to be high enough that I can keep that. And I want that centered kind of in, centered in the projector, but I also have to keep in mind fitting all of my paper on this block of wood. So it's gonna go right side down on the, like the side that your pencil mark is on. This is the right side to me because it has marking on it. It's going to go to what I would call the wrong side of this because it's the part that's going to face the projector at the end that has these bump ins that we did. Right? Yes. And I'm gonna make sure it's high enough it covers that and I'm going to kind of center my block of wood there. I'm going to trace around it, including the holes for the screws. And I kind of cheated it over where I could use a flat bit of this a little bit, although my pieces don't fit exactly, so I'll still have to cut them off. But I can mostly use that straight edge right there. Okay? Uh, so, it's got the two screw holes in it. It's oriented correctly for how this is going to go. Now, before I can cut this out with the jigsaw, I need to make sure that I'm not going to be trying to cut metal of the screws. These three are pretty far from anywhere I'm cutting. This one 
needs to come out. Um, you didn't give me the screwdriver earlier, was it? So is your advice to take all of them out or just remove the one that makes sense to remove? Just remove what needs okay. to come out. Okay, so I'm just gonna take out this one because it's, I think, the only one that will be in any way in my way. We get the jigsaw back out and we follow our lines. And once we have this cut out, we will test fit it to see how good we did. All right, so we got the trusty jigsaw back out. I am just gonna follow. I'm strategically thinking about how to cut it so that it doesn't fall off before I'm ready for it to. So I'm gonna cut from here around to about here and I'm gonna come back from the other side and then I'll cut that little piece. And then at the very end, I'll probably reclamp it and cut this edge to clean that up. That's my current plan. Let's see how it works out. Whew, it is a lot different cutting this double thick. It's a lot more resistant to your hands. Okay, so something about the jigsaw and coming around curves is that where the guide is and where the blade is, there's a good, I don't know, half inch gap there. So my corners didn't turn out on the line because of that gap. I was looking at the guide and not at the blade. Depending on your jigsaw, you may have the same problem. And I mean, that's something we totally understand. When you're sewing a curve and you're trying to watch your seam guide, it can get kind of funky there for a little bit. So give yourself grace if it's the first time you're using a jigsaw to cut a curve like me. Um, you know, we're looking for an approximate shape here. It's probably still gonna work. And we'll test fit it in a minute to make sure that it does. Um, but also it's, Fixable. We can just cut a new one out if we have to. Um, and I think too, for you to learn from my mistake, cut it a little bit wide and you can come back and bring it back in. Obviously, it's always easier to take more off than put something back on. So I'm going to resituate myself right here and cut this last bit of this and then I'm going to resituate again to cut over here and get that last little bit. And then I think I'm gonna be happy with this shape to test fit it. Just it on the jigsaw and it just does it sometimes. Okay, no, well, I'm gonna call this close enough because there's sparks flying off of it. So we're going to test fit this on the projector now. Okay, so because of my mishap with cutting this curve a little closer than I wanted to, um, I'm gonna slightly adjust where I'm gonna put the holes um, in order to make sure they all fit on here well. So I'm just putting my paper pattern back on here and conveniently now this hole lines up with the hole we previously drilled for the screw that was holding it together earlier. And I'm just looking to make sure that everything else still fits and lines up and it does. So I'm just gonna remark everything and I'm gonna pick up and put an X through the mark I don't need. That way I don't get confused in a minute. This is going to fit like this and like that. And we're ready to do the next bit. All right, so we're gonna use, to quote Robert, a drill bit. I'm not really sure which one. I don't have it yet. <laughs> to um, drill, pre-drill for these screws. These that we use to connect to the projector do not have the pointy bit on the end um, because you don't want to break through the projector in any way. They have this flat edge that will 
help protect your projector from you screwing it in too far. Um, so that means you have to have the hole already drilled for it to go in. This is going to be a two-step hole um, so that there is room for the head of the screw to be recessed into the block of wood. So we're going to drill to a quarter inch with a five sixteenths, five sixteenths drill bit. Um, we did the little flag trick like we did the earlier. And so I'm going to drill that at each of these spots and then we'll drill the hole all the way through with it. A smaller drill bit. I'm not sure which one of this. A three sixteenths. A three sixteenths. Okay, so one of the holes ended up exactly where this one was here, and I just. You're gonna easily wallow it out a little bit. Okay. I would like to clamp this down. I'm gonna vacuum out these holes. So that I can see what I'm doing for the next step, and we're gonna switch to the I've already forgotten. 316. 316th drill bit. A quick note: all of these drill bits are extremely common sizes that you can get in any drill bit set from any hardware store. Also, to note that sometimes they're very hot when you're done using them. Just be careful. Using the holes I drilled previously. I am just going to put the tip of the bit where the tip of the bit was before and drill all the way, oh, I'm drilling all the way through. You don't want that to happen onto your workbench. The sacrificial board. So a sacrificial board or hanging it off the edge of where you are working, something like that to protect the tabletop you're working on. Okay, trying again. I'm just sort of guessing when I'm all the way through. Since I have that sacrificial board underneath, I'll double check when I'm done. So checking that I did make it all the way through on all of them, I did. All right, this is what it looks like now. I did this according to the instructions of Robert, but we just realized we made a mistake. So these needed to have the two-step hole here because that was correct for where the heads of these screws are gonna be. But these are on the wrong side. So I'm just gonna flip this over. I'm gonna switch back to this drill bit. I'm gonna use the center of the hole and the center point of this and just do the same thing on this side. It's not gonna hurt anything that's on both sides, but if you don't wanna have to do the work twice, you want it opposite. So the two vertical ones have the jut out on one side and the four on the other. With these little notch outs on the correct side of the board, we are going to put the screws through the holes and they just sort of push through. If it doesn't, try coming in from the bottom to clean it out a little bit and then try again. Okay, and then we're gonna put it back up to our, so they gonna have to, they have to go in all the way where you drilled that extra little cutout so that there's some sticking out the other side. And we are gonna match these up to these screw holes. And we're gonna use a hand screwdriver to screw them in because we don't want to accidentally go too far and break our projector. I'm also only tightening it just a little bit in there until I get all four of them done, and then I'll tighten it a little bit further, but you don't want to over tighten these at all. Okay, so I am just barely off here, and it is enough that there is no making this work. I don't think. Maybe. Well, no, there's no making that work. So, 
you are in time to tell me how to solve this problem. What's up? No matter what I try, I cannot get all four of these to line up. This one and this one are slightly too far apart. Just slightly. Start each of them individually just a little bit, like get each one just barely started. So it's barely started, now try getting the other one barely started. Can you get any of the other ones started? Oh yeah, I can I can choose these two and either one of these, but okay. we're getting a slightly bigger drill bit and drilling through this one that I previously accidentally drilled too deep. Anyways, um, and I'll give it a little bit of wiggle room so that the screw will hopefully fit through. So hopefully that gives us just enough play to make this work. All four screws are in. Now that I've got these all perfectly working, I'm gonna undo them and put in the bolts to be able to attach this to the mount. And then I'll get these in all the way. These two guys like this, we're just gonna put them in and they come from the opposite direction. And we drilled out earlier to give them a little place to rest. All right, so we are going to make sure that these go all the way in. We want them flush with the outside. Okay. Once again, let's try this again. We're a little flustered right now because of children. Interrupting. This is what they do, right? Okay. That one is in. And that one is in, all right. So now we tighten these all down, as I said before, till they are hand tight. We want them to hold the projector up, but we don't want to break the projector. By George, I think we're almost finished. Okay, so everything we need to do to the projector is done. This situation is done and ready to attach to the stand here. The stand needs some feet and then we'll put them together and be done. The leveling feet come in two parts. You've got this part where you're twisting up and down and this part which goes in to the wood. And the part that goes into the wood has these little spiky bits that are gonna hold it still as you're twisting this. And I don't know how to install this spiky bit, guys. So we're gonna ask the expert to come back over here. So you've got the holes we drilled earlier and these little guys are the spiky bits. The spiky bits are going into the wood. The flat part's gonna be on the bottom of your mount here. Um, if your holes are not quite the right size, you can drill them out a little bit bigger, but it's, going, it's made to be snug. Yeah, you should probably drill, drill out a bigger hole for that. Hey, that seems a lot better. Again, if it's not working, you might need a bigger hole to start with. Use a half inch drill bit. If you don't know, and if you do, excuse me here, if you hold the hammer up higher, closer to the head, you have a lot more control, but you have a lot more strength the further down you hold it. It has something to do with levers and science, but I just know that's true. So if you're having trouble getting enough oomph behind your swing, move your hand down as far as you can. We're just gonna take these guys, screw them in where we've just created the spot to screw them in. I'm not going for any specific depth here other than just 
trying to get it, the, the bolt mostly to the other side so that it's got enough bite in there for now. And these we'll be using to go up and down as we level the projector in our calibration later. We've got the mount with its feet attached to it. We've got the projector with the mounting block attached to it. And now all we have to do is put these bolts through this slot that we made way back when. And you can rest it on this here. And you're going to take a washer and place it over that bolt and then this fancy nut and then a washer and then the fancy nut. Oops. The washer helps where you've gotten your slot a little too wide. Okay, I'm not gonna over tighten these right now. They're pretty loosey goosey um, so that we can move the projector up and down as we go to calibrate it. This is now technically done. However, I'm gonna take it all apart again, um, not disassemble it, but take it apart into its two separate pieces, take the mounting block off the projector, and I'm going to sand it. And once it's sanded, then I can prime it and paint it, I can stain it, I can leave it raw wood, but I'm gonna use that sander to help me, um, A, make sure it's not rough anywhere, um, because it's wood, but mostly to get off all of my mistakes. Um, these places where it's kind of blown out from where I was cutting it, where maybe I didn't quite line things up exactly. I can use a really low grit sanding paper to take a bunch of stuff off and then I can kind of work up to some higher grits. I can use the sanding to take my pencil marks off and, you know, kind of clean the whole thing up. And then I'll, I intend to paint it white to match my cutting table and I'll put it back in there um, and it'll be looking all nice in my, in my craft room. So I'm not going to take you through those steps. Um, I may do a separate video on that if that's something you guys really want to see, but that's what I'm going to do to make it look nice for my craft room. All right. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a long one. I know hopefully this was helpful to you though, and you can go through and make this yourself. I told you, you could do it. Keep watching my videos, subscribe, and comment.